please. I'd like to open up our public hearing on the budget and I'd like to remind everyone that it is a public hearing and it's not a commission meeting. We will be not, will not be taking motions or taking action. We'll be listening to you and your suggestions and your proposals. So for the first person that'd like to come and be recognized, they can come to the podium, give their name and address, and they have three minutes to speak. Thank you for coming forward and getting us started. Well, I'll tell you what, if y'all don't know me by now, you won't know me. I'm Eugene Cheney. I live at 760 Bryan Fork Road in Andersonville. And I've just already told my two commissioners up here, if they vote for this down tax increase, I'm gonna try my best to have them defeated next time. They suggested that I'd run against them, which I might do. But my suggestions is, several of them is, that the you they bit purchase that Ford building down there, get rid of the thing, get what you can out of it, start taking taxes on it, because if you hang on to it, you might be three, 10 years before you can sell it. So sell the darn thing, get what you can out of it, and start taking taxes on it. Another suggestion is, is these law enforcement, get out there and write speeding tickets. I know you can sure send them out there where I live at. People out of Knoxville come out there pulling their boats, going to Big Ridge State Park, and they don't slow down. And I got a radar gun and I cocked them out there doing uh, 55 and 60 mile an hour in a 40 mile an hour zone. The same thing through Andersonville. Also out on Park Road and they slowed the traffic down out there. And that would bring some income into this, bring those Peters. Besides that, might take some of these dumb drunk drivers off the road while they're at it. Thank you all for your time. Mr. Cheney, thank you for coming forward and giving us your opinions. Anyone else like to speak? Please come forward. I'm glad to have you here. My name is uh, Rick Turnbill. I live in uh, Rocky Top, uh, Tennessee, and uh, I would just like to encourage this county commission to fund our school systems by uh, approving the budget that has already been approved by our budget committee. We need to fund our schools. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turnbill. All right, we're ready for the next speaker. Please come forward, give your name and address, please. Susie Wiley, 189 Schooner, Andersonville. Thank you. I wanna say I appreciate the work of all the departments and the budget committee to figure out what the needs of our county are. And as a citizen and a property owner, I believe that we all have a shared responsibility to pay taxes as needed and to ensure that we live in a high quality county. To just deny this need for the sake of saying that you don't increase taxes cheats us all. And um, I really feel like the little bit of increased tax to average citizens is, is so minimal. So I am asking that you vote for a budget that includes the increases according to the budget committee. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Yes, sir. State your name and address, please. Mike McGee, 38 Hickory Trail Norris. Um, I'm also in support of the tax increase as long as it goes towards school systems. I have two children who have graduated from Anderson County High School. I'm of the opinion, and I think research backs that a dollar spent here saves you on other services you will provide in the future. You can, you can definitely bring in more industry, good industry like ISIM, uh, quality jobs that provide tax revenue, offset the, the little bit of money you put up front. So uh, I've seen the effect on count other counties in the area who absolutely refuse to have tax increase for their school systems, and it's devastating to the county. The kids can't get good jobs, you can't bring in industry, you can't fund what you need to do. So I'm um, for the school system getting an increase in, tax, an increase in funding. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Please come forward. Thank you. Name and address. April Perry, 90 Dairy Pond Road, Norris. Um, I'm 
here on behalf of the school systems, basically, or the school system, um, we're, as you guys know, we're, you guys are the only people that we have to fund us. And um, I'm also the president of Anderson County Education Association. This year we asked for a 4% raise just to compete with some of the other school systems around us. Um, we're happy and very appreciative of the school board and uh, Dr. Parrott for putting the 2% raise into their budget. Um, we are very appreciative of that, but we are gonna have to continue to fund the school systems if, we're, if our kids are gonna be competitive. And I understand that you all have a very hard job, um, but I would like for you to vote to increase taxes for the schools. Thank you, April. Okay, next speaker. Please come forward. Thank you. State your name and address. My name is Chris Silver, 645 Batley Road, Clinton. And I know I understand there's a lot of concern for the school systems and with county raises too, because people do need to get the cost of living increases and be able to be competitive. So I'm very much for that. However, overall, 90% of the people I've talked to, just regular people in the county, are opposed to raising the property tax. Um, when a household budget <coughs> falls short, we, we make adjustments. And the same thing with a business. I'm a small business owner here in the county. The first thing that we have to look at when I don't hit projections is cutting labor. That's a painful thing. I understand with county jobs how important it is, but sometimes we need to look out of the box and come up with other solutions, and that's what I'm hearing from a lot of the people. And on behalf of them, I just wanted to speak up about that. So um, a lot of the people I know are opposed as myself. I would like to see solutions. I would like to see the raises go through for employees, but I also think we also need to look at making some tough decisions too. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. We have plenty of time. You're welcome to come forward and give your opinions. Anyone else? Thank you. Hi, my name's Tim Elrod. I live at 124 Lone Ridge Lane here in Clinton. I uh, lived here all my life. Uh, and let me be the first to say I'm never in favor of taxes. That's just how we are here. But when you have no alternative and when it comes to our children, you have but one choice. And that choice is to fund the schools. That is our future. My children, they could have went anywhere. I put them in any, at Anderson County. I'm very proud of that fact. I do everything I can to support Anderson County. You're the commission. Figure it out. You've got great, smart people here that have gave, given you all all kinds of proposals. What comes first? The children. That's your future. That's your tax base. That's your, that's your labor pool. That is everything, and we need to keep them here. And we cannot do that if you cut school budgets. Sharpen your pencils. Figure it out. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Please come forward. This is your opportunity. My name is Andy McCamey, 1650 Salt Springs Road in Clinton. And I've been with the school system for a long time, 45 years or more. And this is, I, I've, I've been involved in budget situations with the school system for all those times. And Dr. Parrott and, and, and his working with the board has come up with a very unique plan. It's not about, you know, we're gonna fund salaries, whatever this commission does. But he has come up with a plan that we can maintain our facilities and we can plan down the road because we don't have to wait five years to borrow 10 more million or 
10 years and borrow 20 million. We can fund these things as we go. And that's, I'd never heard of this ideal until Dr. Parrott came up with it, and it's a good one. It fixes the problem. It doesn't patch it, it fixes it. So I hope that you all can go along with it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCamey. The podium is all yours. Please come forward and speak. It's your opportunity to say what you want to about the budget. Thank you. I'm Tim Parrott. I live at 736 Bethel Road, and I have lived in Anderson County all my life. I am a product of Anderson County Schools. I, I've, uh, I love this county. I love this school system. And I know for a fact that uh, anytime you raise taxes, uh, I have had long conversations with my grant, with my father-in-law about this. I've had conversations with people. And, and, and my thing is, if you can do anything, let's figure out how that the next person sitting here in 10 years doesn't have to come and ask to borrow 10 or $20 million. The last $22 million in capital outlay funds that were, were spent were, is 100% fully funded by the school system. And, and when we spend almost $1.5 million every year in interest, that, that would fund everything we need to do. But if we don't do that, then what's going to happen is, and if, if you look back, you will, we will come back and, as Mr. McCamey said, in 10 years, there's, we'll need $10 million. And what will happen is there'll be, there'll be a, a a person come in that's going to borrow, that can borrow us the money, and he say, well, here's the way you can do that. You can push that debt on down the, on down the road another 20 years, and you can re-loose all of these funds, and you can take care of that problem. And at that point, that's a good thing to do because you got to have those roofs. you got to have things fixed. But today, we've got an opportunity because we just funded the school system just funded that $11 million ESG project. So we're, we're, we're taking care of almost 50% of the things. That bill, there was almost $20 million worth of needs. Well, we took care of $11 million of it, and we're going to fund that. But, but please, uh, uh, let, let's do that. Uh, our employees, we lost three teachers. Last week, we lost one to Oak Ridge. We lost two to Knox County. We even lost one to uh, Union County Online School because we are so close and competitive. Union County is with us right now. And one of those people that we lost was the band director at Clinton High School. He's going to Knox County. And you know how hard it is to find a band director. And, and so I would ask you to... Uh, fund this raise for the teachers and, and, and the county too. I think the uh, talking as a citizen, now I'm not as a school system, uh, the county needs to fund capital outlay projects because you've got a lot of buildings, you've got police cars, and I've been sitting here in listing commission for the last 10 years, and every year things come up, we need, they need a new uh, ambulance, you need new sheriff's cars, you need new, you need a, a new fire truck. And trust me, we, we need those. And, and the one things we don't do is with our fire department, if you saw there was an article that says there's so many chemicals that are in building supplies these days, that over 70, upwards of 70% of the firefighters are getting cancer because they don't have the right type of uh, apparatus and things like that. We need to do more for them. So. I think when you put more money in capital outlay, I, I really and truly think the county needs five cents in their capital outlay program. But again, I, I'm here to talk about the school system, and I really appreciate what the what the budget committee did. We asked for eight cents; they gave us six. We have a balanced budget using no rollover, and uh, we do know that that money doesn't come in until taxes are paid. So we know we've got to do some things this year. But 
Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Perry. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Could I request Robbie to just go over this, uh, the total funds? Uh, normally we do that at, at our public hearing, you know, the total general fund, total highway fund, things like that. Good just suggestion, Robert. Are you want me to do Please. the budget highlights? The budget highlights, what we've approved or what the budget committee approved? No, just uh, th this uh, proposed budget that was sent out today. Right here. Actually, just, just, just to give us the highlights of each fund. There you go, yeah. Good suggestion. Okay, for the general fund, the total estimated revenues are 29 million, 29 million 31,000. Total estimated expenditures are 29, 29 million 913,000. For the highway fund, the uh, total revenues are 4.6 million and total expenditures are 4.6 million. General purpose school fund, um, total estimated revenues are 60 million, 60.6 6 million, and total estimated expenditures are 61.4 million. The 151 debt service, um, total estimated revenues are 1.8 million, and total estimated expenditures are 1.7 million. 152 Bobby, rural. rural. One, the uh, 151 debt service fund, is that elementary schools? That's the general fund. That's general fund, yes, okay. Sir. 152 would be the, um, and 156 are the school departments. Okay. So in 152, the rural school debt service fund, total estimated revenues are 2.1 million and total expenditures are 1.8 million. And 156 educational debt service fund, total estimated revenues are 2.2 Two million ninety-two thousand in total estimated expenditures are at two million fifty-five thousand. That's thank you. Pretty much in a nutshell. Thank you, Robbie. All right. Anyone else? I was hoping you'd come <laughs> forward. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. I'm Maria G, and I live at 169 North Seneca Road in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. This is my, I'm going into my 42nd year teaching in Anderson County Schools. I, um, I've always loved teaching in Anderson County Schools. There's been years when I've felt very demoralized and depressed because other counties around us get 4% raise, 2% raise, 3% raise, and we get nothing. But we have been taken care of in the past. But I want, you all to know that we work so hard. We do. Yeah. And we're just as good as the teachers in all the other counties. And we've gotten a lot of new and innovative programs this year that have cost a lot of money. And we've been working so hard to implement these programs. And I would just hope that people understand that education is so important to our future as a county. We don't want our children to drop out of school or to not have the skills to further themselves and for us to become so much like the counties around here that have drug problems and you know meth and you know we have our problems like that but I, I mean what the only thing we can do to help that is to educate our children the best way that we know how and I feel like um, giving us the support for us to know that you all you know really do think that education is important would really speak a lot for us and for the county. Thank you. Thank you. All right, are you ready for me to close it? Anyone else? Any commissioners? Go ahead, Josh. Wanted to comment. Uh, the uh, I think we had about ten people speak, and about half of them were from District Three in Denver, in my district. So I really appreciate how engaged our district is. Um, we get here on the radio and 
in the paper and from people that kind of compare us to other counties and say, well, Knox County's not had a property tax increase in the next number of years. Union County's competitive with teacher salaries, that sort of thing. All these other counties have other revenue sources, like a wheel tax or something. And I know that's a that's a dirty word, but that's if we don't want to continue raising property taxes, we may have to seriously look at another revenue option. And another issue that we've got that I've learned more in the few months I've been on commission is the state balances its budget off of the local government's backs. Absolutely. So um, I don't like a property tax increase either, but if, if you're really serious about doing something about it, talk to your legislators about underfunding the uh, state inmates that they send to our jails um, and, and, can, and seriously think about what a, what a fair way to increase revenue would be. Would a, would a wheel tax be a more fair increase than a property tax increase every few years? It, it's just, just a few things I want to throw out there. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Anderson. Any other commissioner? Any elected officials in the audience for to speak? All right, I'm going to close the public hearing. Closed.